Hello everyone and welcome to Further Testing in RSS Reborn, the intense visual mod for Real Solar System. And in the previous video on RSS Reborn I had decided that it'd be good for planes because, well at least I got a lot of lag for a space launch, though there has been an update since then and maybe that has improved. Uh, but so I decided that I would test my planes pack because I haven't tested my planes pack in 1.12 yet as a matter of fact. And somebody had asked for the craft files for the planes pack. And so I'm also checking out that the craft files actually work, though they have some requirements. So I'll, uh, I've added a zip to my release for the EDB planes pack with the craft files, but I'll have to tell you what the requirements are so that you can open the craft files, right? Because there are other mods involved. So here's the 747-100. There are a total of 14 planes that we are testing here. And this one is the one that is meant to carry the shuttle on its back, though you'll have to have a custom mount for that. I didn't make the mount. And I made the body and the wings and the horizontal and vertical stabilizer, but not the control surfaces. That was because, well, mainly because the th control surfaces are tilted. Uh, if the control surfaces are nice and straight along an axis, it's easier. But whenever there's a slant in the control surfaces, it's really awkward to try and get to work right in um, in Kerbal Space Program. Though it's possible, it's just awkward. Anyway, uh, I did not manage to land as well, mainly because on the final flap setting, which I was trying to use for landing, it suddenly created a huge amount of drag and we stalled. Um, all of the stall speeds are much higher when you're using FAR than it would be in real life. One thing I'm suspicious of is actually the B9 procedural control surfaces that we're using on these, because the planes that I have made built-in control surfaces into the wings with seem to have lower stall, stall speeds and more in line with the real things. So I'll have to look into trying to build in control surfaces for these planes as we see the AN-225 getting really dark. So that's one thing about RSS Reborn. We've got clouds now, all these volumetric clouds, but it gets really, really dark sometimes. And, well, sometimes it's nice and bright like this. This is very atmospheric and so there's the better part of the whole business and so we can see the plane turning around here and these are the stock engines as modified by advanced jet engines so among the mods that would be required to open the craft file uh, basic the mod itself the parts require b9 part switch uh realism overhaul and textures unlimited and b9 part switch i think is only for one thing uh to change the livery uh but for the craft files, you need AJE Extended. AJE Advanced Jet Engines is part of Realism Overhaul and required by it, so you should have that already. But AJE Extended adds more engines like the Progress DT-18s on the AN-225. And apologies, I didn't get the blue and yellow stripes on the AN-225. Uh, that was complicated. Back when I made this, I wasn't very good at texturing these things. So I'll have to update that when I get a chance, though there are other priorities like making the planes work. As we'll see, there are some issues here and there. So I managed to land the AN-225 safely, but the landing gear is a little bit iffy here and there. So aside from AJE ex Extended to get engines like this, we also need B9 airspace for the engine models. AJE Extended doesn't say so, but it actually requires other mods that have engine models like B9 Aerospace and Airplanes Plus, so those are necessary, otherwise you won't have the engines. And Kerbal Foundries is necessary for advanced, uh, sorry, adjustable landing gear. So adjustable landing gear is part of Kerbal Foundries, and I use that landing gear sometimes. Though, uh, you know, you can use whatever landing gear you want. Here, the B-52 is off to an iffy start. Remember, the B-52 has inline landing gear, and then it's got the landing gear on the wingtips. So it's a little bit hard to keep steady sometimes. And we've got the X-15 there. I said 14 planes, actually it's 15 planes if you include the X-15. Uh, so, yep. Uh, but this is one craft file with the B-52 and X-15. And so here we go. Again, no engine sounds. I don't know why the engine sounds for the B-52 and 747, which are custom engines that I have don't work I'll have to look into that and there'll be an update so here I tried many times to deploy the X-15 properly and finally I did it right things you need to remember is of course you have to say control from here first have somebody on board the X-15 and also double check the fuel priority the fuel priority between the external tanks and the internal tanks for the X-15 uh, should be set right in the craft file now but they sure weren't when I started the session when I recorded all this so 
yeah, uh, got messed up a few times. Don't use uh, atmospheric autopilot at this point. Atmospheric autopilot will try to limit your pitch and all. And so, I don't know what I did wrong on that one, but uh, here we go again. It's always something. Anyway, so, yep, I did remember to save the state when we uh, right before we released the X-15, and so I suggest you do that as well. So up we go. And so atmospheric autopilot will actually probably prevent you from pitching up like this. In fact, I have SAS turned off right now, just to give you an idea how rough it is to try and pull up with the X-15. Much easier to try and go fast with it. And there goes the external tanks. And we are trying for space here, and we do make it. So we get a look at RSS Reborn from a greater height than the other planes will be capable of. There's a little bit more lag here, but it's not too, too bad. Actually, the worst lag I experienced during this session was in map view. Uh, turning, into, uh, turning to map view is really, really bad. <laughs> so uh, just a little bit of feedback uh, there. I don't know if there's a setting for that to make sure that map view is not so laggy. Anyway, down we go. And actually, this is probably the smoothest I've ever dealt with the X-15 in this part when we are going down and have to pull up. Oh, and if you decide to try the X-15, make sure to turn on the RCS right when you release from the B-52 or even before that, uh, because it will be necessary in helping you pull up even though it's still very much in the atmosphere and everything. So, we are quite far away from Edwards Air Force Base, where we took off, and so I need to turn around. Fortunately, I cut the engines when we got a space apoapsis, and that was because I was sort of losing control there. The RCS isn't good enough to keep you pointed straight up uh, af after you get to a certain altitude, so we actually were forced to go horizontal, and I decided to cut the engines at that point. As a result, we still had some fuel left, and the engine can reignite, so I used it to boost back, and that helped us get back to Edwards Air Force Base. We dumped the bottom part of the vertical stabilizer, extended the little skids, and I tried to slow down, I really did, uh, by turning around and around. The air brake doesn't work on the vertical stabilizer, so uh, yeah, the skids uh, sh can't work at this speed, so you'll have to figure out how best to to land with those skids in the back. I suggest using your own skids because um, the skids are built into the body, and so if something happens to one of the skids, the whole body explodes. So that's a downside. Anyway, next up is the B-58 Hustler, and so there's a Mach 2 bomber, or it's supposed to be, and you could put a satellite deployment launcher on the belly of it and go like that. It requires a lot of speed to get off of the runway, but it did get off of the runway even though it was the stock runway. It does take a lot more speed than you'd expect in order to do it, and yeah, far just has that way, especially with the Delta Wings. We do get past Mach 2 as a matter of fact. Uh, some of the airplanes will have trouble getting to their max speed. And I do return, but I crash. Uh, put air brakes on it. Uh, trust me. Put air brakes on it. I did not put air brakes on it. You should probably put some air brakes on it. Anyway, so that's that. And next up, we have the F-100. And so this is one of the Century series. I made the F-100, F-101, F-102, and F-104. And the F-100, well, it's just sort of a novelty thing. It's not a really spacey thing in particular. Uh, it has real trouble staying straight on the ground with the landing gear. You might want to replace that landing gear uh, or straighten it up somehow. Something's wrong with it. But ultimately, I take off with it. Now, it is a fighter craft, and I get a little bit overconfident with that aspect of it eventually. But there it is taking off from my scenery for Edwards Air Force Base. And here's me getting overconfident with it. So, fighter jet though it might be, it's uh, it's reluctant to deviate that much and pull crazy maneuvers. So yeah, 
be careful with it. The next plane is much more forgiving. The F-101 is one of my favorites, even though it had a troubled life to some extent. Uh, so here is the Voodoo. It has two of the engines that the F-100 has just one of, and so it has a lot more power, and it is in theory capable of getting to Mach 1.7, though I'm not entirely sure uh, it can do that. Uh, during the test, it got past Mach 1.3 at least, but yeah, trying to push it to Mach 1.7 wasn't entirely successful. And so I'll have to look into that and why things seem a little bit more draggy, especially in 1.12. But here it is among the clouds, the volumetric clouds with RSS Reborn and the special plugin from Black Rack, the version of Eve and Scatterer. And so we can see a uh, sort of niftier and more stable plane in this case. I sort of like the wing design as well. Also the whole engine placement I just find very nice. So yeah. Here we go, I do a flyby of our facilities around here. Pulling mini G's. It won't pass Mach 1 this low. You can see it's very reluctant to do that. But uh, a higher altitude it gets past Mach 1, as we see. Mach 1.3 and above, but I decide not to try and push it. It's accelerating rather slowly. Maybe it'll get to Mach 1.7, but I don't know. The F-102, I recommend don't use it. <laughs> don't use it. For reasons I don't understand, it has a hard time just staying on its landing gear without skidding out of control. Like that. And I tried replacing the landing gear and everything to no avail. And try as I might, it has a tendency to go out of control. But even when we do keep it going straight, it has a tough time getting up into the air. So eventually we had a little bit of an excursion into the desert here, or the, the salt flats at uh, Edwards Air Force Base. And we were going like 120 meters per second, which is crazy. Uh, though some of the airplanes take about as much like the Hustler, the, the, the F-102 just has a tougher time getting to 120 meters per second, but even then I'm pulling up as hard as I can and it's not going up. It might like go up briefly but then collapse back into the surface, so yeah, I'm gonna say uh, just avoid it. It looks nifty, but it's dangerous. All right, so next up is the F-104, which surprisingly is much safer than the F-102. Uh, F-104 had more of a reputation for being a problem child, but yep, we uh, take off just fine. Uh, lower speed than the F-102. And up we go. Now landing it might be tricky, but... But one plus side is that it has some built-in control surfaces, especially the tail control surfaces built in. So it's not B9 procedural on the tail. And here we are breaking Mach 1. It's supposed to be able to get to Mach 2, but even in with the Sim Skunk Works uh, F-104 in Flight Sim, I have trouble actually getting it to that, except in like very particular conditions. Here we get to Mach 1.9 and that was good enough for me. I think that's a reasonable amount to demonstrate that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. I don't attempt to land it. I had enough uh, enough pain and suffering with the F-102. I decided that I wouldn't be attempting landings anymore. The Draken, the Saab Draken here, uh, seems to want to sit on its tail so maybe move the landing gear a little bit further back once you get the craft file or Double check that, though don't move it too far back otherwise it'll be very difficult to rotate. It does straighten out here, it might just be the slope of the runway. So once we get going it noses down like that, but yeah. It builds up speed, but it, it was very draggy. When we get it up into the air, it doesn't really accelerate very fast. And deviating from prograde is not a good idea with it. So again, I think Delta Wings for some reason are not working very well at this point. 
Especially such a large delta wing like this. Yep, it's just skirting over the desert, but we hardly accelerate here. I do try to keep it to prograde so that I can accelerate well, but um, I wasn't having any sense that I was going to get past Mach 1 like this, so, which is a problem. It should be able to. And speaking of getting past Mach 1, here is the venerable SR-71. And I think it's my best looking plane, though the engines don't fit quite right because I'm using the engines that AJE modifies instead of making my own. But if I make my own, apparently I don't get engine sounds. So probably for the best that we just use the ones from and modified by AJE. So up we go. Oh, and when I make my own, I do put the AJE stuff on. It's not like I'm not doing advanced jet engine things when I make my own engines. Uh, yep, nice. It's got a nice look to it as it climbs above the clouds, and we enjoy the scenery provided by RSS Reborn. And of course, also uh, Cape Canaveral HD and the facilities Canaveral pads. So I get to Mach 1.5, but it really doesn't even want to get past Mach 2, so I have to investigate what's going on with this one. Now, we're, we are a little bit low, it should be above 20 kilometers, but I was also having trouble getting it to 20 kilometers, so... Uh, some serious issues here with the SR-71. Looks good, but doesn't work quite right. But, we do have a plane that can definitely get past Mach 3, and that is the SR-72 slash Darkstar, which is uh, modeled after the one in Flight Sim in particular, though scaled up because the one in Flight Sim doesn't actually have the volume necessary to carry the fuel that it's supposed to. Uh, so, yeah, I made it so that it's more reasonable and accurate-ish, uh, but it is a uh, scramjet, ultimately. It's got the jet mode using kerosene and then the scramjet mode using liquid hydrogen. And so up we go. It actually takes off the runway very well because actually it's not controlled by FAR. It needs body lift to work, and so it's using the stock aero still, or at least I don't have the FAR aerodynamic model on it specifically. Far knows about it, but uh, that also helps things get off the runway easier, it looks like. Anyway, so it's got the stockish aerodynamic model and it gets to Mach 3, and then here we need to switch to scramjet mode. And so we do. And our acceleration continues. It easily gets past Mach 7. Though the landscape's a bit choppy. Well, that's because I'm time warping at 3x fizz warp, so you have to expect that. And we get the flame effects, and we pass Mach 9, and we're there. Try to avoid the map view as much as possible because it's choppy there. But I can't get to Mach 10. Apparently, I'm not Tom Cruising this right. Uh, we probably need to be higher for that. And I end up at this height, and when you're going at Mach 9 point, almost 9.5-ish, it's hard to really coax it up. <laughs> uh, well, especially when I'm in 3x time warp. Probably not a good idea. But I forgot about the residuals. And it has residuals, and you have to decelerate smoothly out of the scramjet mode. Uh, otherwise, when it stops the scramjet mode, it does that. Just, like, explodes and... You know, so you have to make sure before you run out of the fuel for scramjet mode, you slow down, get down to where you can uh, breathe the air for the kerosene mode, and then go on from there. So you have to be careful with that. And I tried to get a recovery. Uh, it looked like it was getting a recovery sometimes, but no such luck. So, Super Guppy. This is unlike anything else, obviously. Very draggy propeller. This is the first propeller plane I'm featuring here. And it accelerates very slowly, <laughs> and it doesn't even have anything inside right now. So, oh, uh, no, uh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't have anything inside. I saw Avgas, but it actually uses Avgas. I normally use Avgas as a dummy payload, but it actually uses Avgas. So that's how it behaves with only a half load of gas. Um, yep, yeah, it is tough to fly. Special use only, obviously. Could slap on some uh, souped up engines on it and try like that. 
but I, I do feel it's a little bit draggier than it ought to be and should perform a little bit better than it does, but it is what it is. It still looks good and I don't attempt to land it again. I was running out of time at this point. This was during livestream, all of these uh, plane tests. The T-38 is probably the easiest plane to fly out of all of them. You'll have the least trouble with the T-38, as you should. I mean, it's a trainer, supposed to be easy to fly, and it in fact is. Uh, though some casualties have occurred with it uh, because the ease at which people fly, can fly it uh, sort of makes it deceptive. You have to still be careful, right? And so, we need to take off here. Though actually, I think we could take off at that speed already. It practically takes off on its own. Uh, the control surfaces are all built in, so this is not using V9 procedural wings at all. And that, I think, makes it easier to handle. That's because, again, the control surfaces are aligned uh, with the axes, so it was easier to manage them. And I'll try to fix some of the others and build the control surfaces into the wings and such so that we don't have to use B9 procedural wings, but it is very complicated. But it does seem to have a benefit as far as the flight dynamics are concerned. So as I play around with this, I do enjoy flying it. Wish we had a T-38 for flight sim and other things. We always get the F-5, we never get the T-38 for some reason. And we do a little flyby of the pads. And ultimately, I actually uh, go into the cockpit, which is just the stock Mark I cockpit, and do a landing. I don't even think this is a modified version. I mean, this is not definitely not a modified version with Frost Prop Monitor or anything like that. Just a stock cockpit, and we land safely. One of the few planes that I'm going to go into cockpit mode for. All right, so there we go. Aside from the AN-225, this was the only safe landing of the session. Uh, but for some of the other planes, I didn't even attempt a landing, so... Yeah, it was rough. Uh, put air brakes, always put air brakes. It'll help a lot. Uh, but here we are with the XB-70 Valkyrie. And this is the last plane of the lot. And... Well, it's got a nice big wing, but it still needs to accelerate quite a lot in order to take off. It does make it by the end of the runway, I think. Yeah, just barely. So, up we go. We aren't dipping or anything. Looks very graceful, very beautiful plane. One of the earlier ones I made though, so I don't think I've done it justice. Uh, it does have the um, tilting wing edges. The outer wing pieces do tilt downward. I don't think that has any effect on the flight dynamics at all, by the way. But here we are past Mach 1. And it has sort of an SR-71 issue as far as acceleration is concerned. It doesn't want to do it. So uh, we couldn't get to Mach 3. It sort of reluctantly got up to Mach 2. But there you have it. Those are the planes and the craft files will be part of the mod now. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.